One of my best memories growing up was living through the 90s. All of my favorite things happened during that time period. Video games. Music. Cartoon Network. And the rise of the internet. It was a good time to be alive. And things were great in the small town that I lived in. But there came a dark time where everyone was paranoid of letting their children out of the house without supervision. 40 minutes from where I lived, a disappearance would occur that would shake the surrounding area. News reports would creep their way onto televisions of rural upstate New York. I remember seeing missing posters everywhere I went of a young girl who went missing in 93. And the case has always stuck with me ever since. This is the disappearance of Sarah Ann Wood. From the pictures I've seen of Sarah, she seemed like a happy kid, one full of life and promise. I didn't know her personally, but I believed that she was a good kid with a good heart. In an unfortunate turn of events, life would change for her and her family one summer day. Sarah Ann Wood was born to Robert and Francis Wood on March 4, 1981. Her family resided in the Mohawk Valley region in upstate New York near the city of Utica and the village of Herkimer. On August 18, 1993, she had stopped by the Norwich Corners Church before making her way back home, where she was a summer Bible school attendee. She started to make her way back home from the church, which was less than a mile away from her house on Hockadam Road. She was seen riding a pink 10-speed bike, wore a pink shirt that had Guess Who embroidered on the front of it, along with brown sandals, turquoise shorts, and a headband. She traveled her way up the steep hill on Hockadam Road. Sarah never made it home that night. Less than a mile away from her house, Sarah's pink bike and supplies that were picked up from the church she stopped at were discovered in some brush on the road that same evening. Thorough searches, news stories, and missing posters would take over for a few years in hopes that someone would shed light on the events that took place that bleak August day. I remember when it all happened, with my young self seeing posters of Sarah at the local church and all around town, not knowing the scope of the situation and why my parents were protective of us going through it. Being young, you're not entirely aware of what's happening in the world around you sometimes. Finally, after a few years of searching high and low, hope in finding Sarah and Wood would emerge. Lewis Lund Jr. of North Adams, Massachusetts, caught the attention of authorities in January of 1994 from an attack brought onto the victim, Rebecca Savarees. Rebecca was able to break free from Lund as he tried to force her at gunpoint to get into a borrowed pickup truck in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. He was arrested and charged when authorities found the truck and a loaded firearm inside. Lewis Lund Jr. was interrogated for three days where crucial information to Sarah's case would come to light. He mentioned he was a person that was subject to blacking out and having memory lapses, but confessed to murdering two children. The first one being 12-year-old James Bernardo, who disappeared in Pittsfield, Massachusetts on October 22, 1990. The other being Sarah Ann Wood. He claimed that he drove up to her and forced her into his van with a hunting knife. He bound her and drove her farther upstate to the Adirondack Mountains, where he and then clubbed her to death with a tree branch. He also claimed that he buried her and eerily told the police, I didn't check to see if she was breathing, because I don't like to touch dead bodies. Then proceeded to draw up a map with the location of Sarah's remains, near Racket Lake in the Adirondack Mountains, next to the town of Inlet. Unfortunately, with two extensive searches through the surrounding area, Nothing came of it but discouragement and despair. No evidence, no news, and no Sarah Ann Wood. Lent admitted she wasn't really there and refused to give up any more details on where she could possibly be. He mentioned he had another body buried nearby and didn't want that one to be located as well. Later on, Lent recanted his statements about Sarah, but was convicted of the crime anyways. Lewis Lund Jr. was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison without the possibility of parole in Massachusetts in 1995. The eerie thing is that multiple suspects have been stated as a possibility, 
so one or more might still be out there. The other thing that's a mystery is if Len actually committed the crime, or if he was just talking to get his face in the spotlight. We might never know. Sarah's family started the Sarah Ann Wood Rescue Center, which ended up being renamed to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Every year in New York State, cyclists make a four-day trip from Buffalo to Albany to raise awareness for missing children and to ride in Sarah's honor. It's been a little over 28 years since Sarah Ann Wood was last seen. Her remains or any real solid evidence have yet to be solved, but the search has continued. She was 12 at the time and would be 40 years old if she was still with us today. It's a heartbreaking story that's cursed the surrounding area for some time, and I can't imagine what the family has gone through in hopes of possibly bringing their daughter back home. It's tragically ironic that her shirt said guess who, because it seems like the whole situation feels like a guess who, guess where.